Welcome to another edition of the Storm Report. I am Matt Schellenberger, joined by head football coach Mike Cochran. Coach, coming off a game the other day to Arkansas Monticello, you lost the game 22 to 19, but you won the first down battle 22 to 9. You outgained them in yardage, 339 yards to 223. What was the overall difference um, in the game? Mm -hmm. uh, it really came down to special teams. Um, we, we outscored them, our offense to their offense, 19 to 12, um, but we gave up a blocked extra point that went back for two. That's a, that's a three-point difference because we lost the one and uh, then a punt return for a touchdown. I, I, really, that was the difference in the ball game. Um, we did have some opportunities offensively. We missed a field goal um, and then we also were in the red zone and came away with no points um, on one occasion. Um, and and um, you know, a couple times we kicked field goals where, uh, you know, we really should have had touchdowns. So there's a lot, in a close game like that, there's lots of opportunities, lots of things you can look at and say, well, we could have won it here, we could have won it there. Um, honestly, it was it was a one to two play um, difference in the entire game. Um, but uh, the guys played hard um, and uh, played well, you know, for the most part with the exception of about three plays. Coach, uh, one of the guys we're going to talk to in just a second, Cass White, tied a school record with 13 catches. He's kind of turning on late in the season, playing really well now. Tied with your team in receptions with 26, 256 yards on the season and a touchdown. Playing really well here, um, especially towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done a good job. Um, you know, he he's a good route runner. He does, you know, he moves well in space and and um, you know. They had um, they had a hard time covering him on Saturday, so I'm glad we were able to get the ball to him. Coach, uh, one of the things that needs to be noted is you played that game without your starting quarterback Dylan Terry, but freshman quarterback Trey Hills he played pretty well for a freshman, especially 23-41, 233 yards and a touchdown. He did throw three picks. Is that part of the growing process for a freshman quarterback? I, you know, I think so. Um, and I, I will say this. Um, you know, one of those was a tip ball. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, two of them were tip balls. Um, you know, in, in his defense, um, at the same time, one of them could have been thrown better. Uh, the one that hurts uh, probably just under threw it a little bit because it, it would have been a touchdown or we would have ended up kicking a field goal on that mm -hmm. series because we were, um, I believe, about the 21-yard line or so, not quite the red zone but just mm -hmm. out of it and um, uh, it ended up not uh, coming away with points because of, of that pick in the end zone. Um, and. and uh, you know, so he'll he'll learn from that. Um, I think you know everybody learns from the mistakes they make, and and he'll be a better quarterback this week because of that. Uh, he's also a guy I think it needs to be noted. Eleven rushes for forty three yards. Can that bring a different dynamic to the offense when a quarterback can also use his yeah. feet? It does, and it you know it gives our opponents a lot more to prepare for. Um, you know, option is is a definite part of the game plan in a variety of forms, um, along with. Um, you know, our normal passing game. Coach, transitioning to the defensive side of the ball, you held them to 123 rushing yards. Um, do you think that's one of the better defensive performances of the season so far? Uh, yeah, I, and really because we didn't give up big plays. You know, we've, we've played well in, in spots against some of the other good teams in our conference. And um, it, so what we did a great job, it, it, the real difference was third down. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been very successful on first down and second down um, against most of the teams we play. Um, but they just really stepped up on third down this last week. Coach, uh, it seems like I bring up his name every week. Blake Tavel, Cavill, excuse me, 14 tackles. Sherrod Daniels, though, 14 ta or 11 tackles. Those guys have really played well this season. Obviously, you had Blake last season, but Sherrod, Dan Sherrod Daniels has has he been a surprise, or is he you knew exactly what you were going to no, get? No, I, I mean he's playing um, uh, about like we thought he would, mm -hmm. um, and I think he'll continue to get better. Um, you know, he spent a year out of the game. Um, he also had a big interception that set up uh, one of our touchdowns, and uh, yeah, I think we scored on the very next play. Um, you know, he's had a couple of those this year that it, deep in their territory that have, have really uh, helped out the team. How um, beneficial is it to a defense when you've got like guys like Crystal Lasica, um, Jay Garrett, Blake Cavill? 
all those guys can all get to the quarterback in different ways. Obviously, Cavill's a linebacker, not a defensive end, but you have a lot of different ways how you can get to the quarterback. Sure. I, you know, I, our team speed is, uh, you know, a major factor. Those guys are fast. Um, you know, our defensive line is able to, to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage uh, fairly often, and that does put pressure, you know, on the opposing quarterback. Um, but wh where that really starts is when and first down mm -hmm. um, so that you put them in a position where they feel like they need to throw. And um, I, certainly those guys can, can put pressure on him from there. All right, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back with wide receiver Cass White. Rowing to victory requires expertise, accountability, and most of all, teamwork. That's why Kate has Tinker Federal Credit Union right there in the boat with her, helping ensure she crosses each financial finish line in first place so she can focus on what's important. Getting a little more bling. TFCU. We get it. Welcome back to the Storm Report. I am Matt Schellenberger, joined by receiver Cass White. Uh, Cass, the other day you tied the school record with 13 catches, you broke the school record in kickoff returns, and you lead the Great American Conference in kick return yards. How satisfying is that to obviously um, break that or break a record, entire record here at SNU? Uh, that's pretty satisfying. Um, it's a, a good goal to reach. You know, that was some goals I said before I came up here, but it would have been possible not for my quarterback, Trey Hills, and uh, the linemen and the coaching staff to come up with the schemes for me to get the ball and a, a special teams coach for all the good schemes and everything he set up for, uh, for me to be successful, catching the ball, receiving the ball, kick off return yards and everything like that. So it's a big shout out to my line and my quarterback and just the coaching staff. You're now tied with the lead um, on the team in receptions with 26. Uh, you have 256 yards and a touchdown so far this season. Individually, um, how happy are you with your play so far? Uh, I'm pretty satisfied. There's always room for improvement. So I see uh, a lot more coming, but it's pretty satisfying. If I know what I can do and uh, much more I can facilitate for the team and things like that. Just benefiting the team mm -hmm. is the key. So. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. What's one thing that you guys can do to improve as an offense? You've improved week after week, it seems like. Um, what's one thing you guys can do this week to take that next step forward? I think it's chemistry. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of freshmen and transfers, so when we first came in, we were still building a bond. And now it's like you can feel the chemistry mm -hmm. in practice. You know, the brotherhood is there, so just continue building the chemistry. So I think, you know, we got it now. We're going to get this win this weekend. Uh, one thing that we noticed is that you've really turned it on here later in the season. Um, what is it that's changed for you from week one to now? Because you've really just turned it on these last couple weeks and really improved, obviously, from week one to now. Yeah, it was uh, just finding out like the offensive schemes because mm -hmm. I went from outside receiver to end. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I switched a couple positions. So it was just figuring out the, uh, the wide receiver depth on your route and just staying disciplined. So I finally caught on to the offensive scheme and uh, got in there. We're transitioning over to the Southwestern Oklahoma State game this Saturday. What kind of challenges are they going to bring to try and slow down your offense? Uh, a lot of pressure from the D-line in a couple zones, but man, you know, disguising a lot of defenses. It's mainly pressure though. So. If a team like that's pressuring, obviously, whoever's playing quarterback, does that make you run shorter routes? Or are you going to try and get, get off the ball a little bit quicker? What are some of the things as a receiver you have to do to uh, help out your quarterback? Uh, just stay disciplined on my routes, run them hard and fast, and uh, get to the right depth and get open. You know. Um, on offense, what are, what are you guys going to have to do to move the ball? Is, is the run game going to be a key? Are you guys as receivers going to have to help carry the load? What are you guys going to have to do? We have to do a lot of blocking. You know, stay disciplined on our blocking, uh, make sure that you got your guy and you block him. And we're going to do a lot of running, but we're going to equal it out with passing as well. I got to ask you, as a special teams guy and a receiver, is it more exciting to return that kick or is it more exciting to maybe possibly have that long ball or catch a slant and go 70 yards? Uh, man, that's, that's, that's a hard decision. I just enjoy getting the ball in my hand, so uh, I have to go with both, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> I just like the ball in my hand. In your opinion, this is the last question I'll ask you, what is the key to getting a victory on Saturday? Uh, like I said, just mainly discipline. That's, that's what we've been on, staying disciplined. Because 
for the majority of the games, we're in it, but you know, we fall off a little bit, you know, might miss a little assignment. So, just staying disciplined, playing uh, sound football, and uh, I believe we'll get the victory. All right, Cash, thank you so much for joining us on the Storm Report. We'll be right back with head coach Mike Cochran. Being a front woman takes confidence, dedication, and more than a pinch of swagger. Lucky for Kim, she has Tinker Federal Credit Union on Rhythm Guitar. And with our mobile app helping keep her checking account in tune, she can focus on what's important. Nailing that next solo. TFCU. We get it. Welcome back to the Storm Report. I am Matt Schellenberger, joined by head football coach Mike Cochran. Coach, uh, this week you got Southwestern Oklahoma State on the road in Weatherford. What kind of challenges um, overall are they going to present? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, offensively, um, they've got some good players. Um, number 44 is an excellent receiver, but he's he's pretty versatile. He's also a, a tight end, a fullback. Um, he, you know, he plays all over the place. So the quarterback um, is healthy this year, and, and he's a good football player. Puts puts the ball in a good spot for, for his receivers. Um, and, and they, they're effective at, at running the football. Um, and so they, they definitely present some challenges. And they're able to score some points. Um, defensively, you know, their front four um, play really good football. Um, you know, number 49 is one of the best defensive linemen that we'll see uh, all year. And, um, uh, you know, they're, they're very quick off the ball, but they're very sound in what they do. And, and their back half is, is very sound in their, in their coverages. Coach, uh, you talked how they can run the football. They've got three guys that will run the ball. D.C. Walker, uh, 571 rushing yards as a running back. Carl Hodge also has 398 rushing yards. But their quarterback, Dustin Stintna, uh, he has 312 rushing yards. How do you prepare for three different guys that can run right at you? Right. Well, I, the quarterback's very athletic. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously you got to be disciplined. You got to be gap sound. Um, you have to take away the first option, uh, which would be the running back. But then, um, you know, you have to um, have someone uh, who is going to account for where the quarterback will be or could be. And um, and then um, just you know, in uh, the passing game, he'll. He'll tuck it and run if, if uh, his receivers aren't open. And so you just you have to account for that for being sound in your, your pass rush lanes um, and uh, you know have someone who can react whenever he leaves the pocket. Coach, you talked a little bit about the tight end. Um, their tight end actually leads their team in receptions, Ryan Corbin. Uh, he has 50 catches. What are, obviously, when you have a tight end, it's kind of can be that safety valve, but it sounds like he does a little bit more than just uh, clear the middle of the field. It sounds like he's everywhere. Yeah, I, he'll line up as the outside receiver. He'll line up a tight end. He'll he'll motion. Um, he'll he'll line up in the backfield. They'll run wildcat with him. Um, it, you know, he's uh, he's a guy that you have to know where he is all the time. They've got uh, some other very good players, um, but he he certainly is someone that they favor, and they try to find a way to get him the ball. Um, you know, and so we just we just have to be aware of, of where he is and. Um, uh, you, you know, play play sound football. You know, uh, with the rest of the scheme. Have you played a tight end uh, so far this season like that? It plays everywhere. I mean, because it doesn't seem like in the GAC we've seen just a whole lot of tight ends. But have you played a tight end mm -hmm. as talented as him so far? I, um, we've played and we've seen some pretty good tight ends, but they are just tight ends. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't move around like he does, and so that's what you know he brings to the table. Um, you know, he's able to to play at different spots, and and uh, you you can get mismatches. He's a he's a big guy um, uh, just by splitting them out and, and those kinds of things and, and so yeah, he's definitely different than what we've seen. Uh, one of the better players on their defense is senior linebacker Ryan Feller. Uh, he has 76 tackles this season. Their overall defense as a whole, what are some of the things they're going to do to slow you guys, try and slow you guys down on Saturday? Well, you know, they're, they're a team that um, are they're pretty consistent within their scheme? Um, they they can put pressure on you without blitzing, which allows those linebackers to I mean allows them to play levels, allows, allows those linebackers to to make their reads and and um, and so you know they're they're not a team that that's going to try to. They're going to be really good at what they do, and, and they will bring pressure at times, and then they will twist and, and those kinds of things. Um, but they're pretty confident in 
um, almost their base stuff that that they'll they'll line up and and uh, you know have success you know just doing that. One of the things that I think could be uh, one of the keys is you guys' special teams um, as far as kick returns have been pretty good so far this season. Cass White um, broke the school record in kick return yards the other day against Arkansas and Monticello. He leads the Great American Conference in kickoff return yards. Has your special teams as far as um, that goes, has it been pretty good so far this season? Uh, special teams have been really hot and cold. Um, you know, we've, we've had success in our kickoff returns, but our punt returns have not been what they need to be. Um, you know, we've, we've had um, some success in our kickoffs and our kickoff coverage, uh, but our punt return, I mean our, our punt coverage has not been what it's supposed to be. So it's been really hot and cold, but yes, the kickoff return has, has been a bright spot as far as that goes. Coach, what do you think is the main key to getting a victory on Saturday? Um, I. Well, first of all, we got to outscore, um, and and uh, it, it, you know if that's uh, eight seven, but just one more point than than they can put up, and um, but it just comes down to playing sound football and uh, winning the turnover battle. If we can force some turnovers defensively, but we we've got to to hang on to the football offensively. You know we've gone on a a string uh, lately where we've turned the ball over more than we did early in the season, whether it's through fumbles or interceptions, um, and, and so um, we we really have to. That, that's something that we have to be good at. All right, Coach, thank you very much for joining us on another edition of the Storm Report. That's going to do it for another edition of the Storm Report. Be sure to join us next week as we recap the Southwestern Oklahoma State game and we look ahead to the final home game of the year and also homecoming in Northwestern Oklahoma State. <laughs>